Salam, my name is Lilian. I come from Cuba. Uh, it's an island in South America, near Mexico, Colombia, all of these countries. So my native language is Spanish. Um, I came to Bahrain almost seven years ago, and I became a Muslim a little over than one year ago. I was baptized when I was a baby as a Christian, but I never followed the religion. I was raised by my mom as an atheist. She doesn't believe in any God, and I didn't. But I always felt there was someone or something there. Even though I always believed there was something there, and even whenever I asked for something, I never mentioned any name. I said, God, whoever you are, please help me, please guide me to the right path. And then I came to Bahrain as a musician. I was a pianist. And then one day I came to Al Fateh with my friends and they gave us a tour. And they said, now is, is prayer time. So if you want to just watch us from the first floor. I said, yeah, yeah, I want to know everything about it. And then she explains how each person is shoulder to shoulder next to each other. It doesn't matter. Um, kids, um, all men. And I stared on the balcony and I was watching all of that. And I was like, it, it looks amazing. And then when the prayer started, I started crying. And then, <laughs> sorry. I was like, because I was not sad. I was just crying. And my friend was like, oh my God, you're going to be Muslim. And I was like, maybe, I don't think so, but maybe, I don't know. And then when we finished the um, tour, um, I asked one of my friends, this happened to me, what is it about? They said, no, it's because you have a good heart, so you feel the good energy in the mosque, because whenever you go to the mosque, you leave the bad energies outside. And I was like, okay, it makes sense. Then I started asking more about Islam, and I met a friend, he's from Scotland. And I was like, how come you're Muslim? He's like, he explained his story to me. Um, he's been a lot of years Muslim. He was living in Saudi first, and then with him was the first person who actually explained to me more about the religion. Because I have a lot of misconceptions, obviously, because I've lived far away, and to make sense. Then one day, I'm in city center, and I said, I want to go to the mosque with my current husband. We met through common friends, so I saw him there. It's like, can you take me to the mosque? I want to know how to pray. It's like, are you sure? Like, how come you're not Muslim? No, I just want to know more about it. I told the reception, I want to pray. She's like, are you Muslim? I said, no. OK, then I will find you a tour guide, because you cannot pray without being Muslim. So yeah, no problem. The person that came, it was the same person, the same sister that gave me the first tour when I cried. And I said, you are the same person. She's like, you came to my tour? Yeah, you were the first one who gave me a tour today. She's like, subhanAllah, and how do you feel about it? I was like, I cried. She's like, subhanAllah, I cannot believe. How come I only come on Saturdays? I was like, you only come on Saturdays? Yeah. I was like, I don't know. I just felt like coming to the mosque today. She's like, OK, come, come, and we'll give you the tour again. I prayed with her. She, she told me the steps. And then she's like, why don't you come for the Eat Open House in Al Fateh? I said, OK, sure, I will come. Then I came. And the second day when I came, she told me, I see something different in you today. I don't know why. I said, I don't know. <laughs> then on that second day of Eid, I told her I want to be Muslim. I took my shahada, and then they put me in contact with Cover Islam for my certificate. But yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm uh, praying. I still pray with my papers because Arabic is very hard for me. But yeah, I shall I try to do it every day. So I've been coming to the mosque 
Now I'm starting inshallah to come more often because I was working. Now I'm, as I'm staying at home. So I've been doing Islam classes with a teacher. And then I'm gonna start inshallah soon the Arabic classes. I just know a few words from him and from the community because Arabic is all around. Um, it's been difficult, but I, it sounds beautiful. Like I love Arabic. I just don't understand and don't speak. I just uh, speak a few words. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, shwe shwe, miskin. <laughs> but um, yeah, inshallah, I will learn fast. Then I only learn and listen to the Quran recitation for my prayers. And I try to find their translation, but yeah. All in all, I still don't know well Arabic, but that's my plan. She still doesn't know. She came in October for one week. We were, we didn't see each other for like six years. Actually, since I came to Bahrain, I haven't seen her because the first time I went to Cuba, she moved to Spain. So we only speak through WhatsApp. And she is very, very strict. Every time I try to talk to her, look, I found this book, read it. No, so I was like, okay, she still needs time. But I knew when she come here, and she actually experienced the culture and the religion, she will understand better. So when she came, I tried to bring her the first day, but we couldn't. So the only day we could bring her was right before her flight back to Spain. It was good. She was, she was asked a lot of questions. I told her, ask everything you want. This is your moment, because at the end, I don't know much. So she did live with a better understanding and a better idea of Islam. Still now, I, I still send her some books and she's still reluctant. She's like, don't talk to me about it. Like, okay, now I understand it's better, but she's in already. I took my decision to finally wear hijab full time. So I will have to tell her anyways. And every Ramadan, she understands, oh, it's for respect and like, I'm trying fasting, but like as experience, and she's okay with it. But then now that I'm going full time, I will have to tell her. And at the end, if it's not okay with it, it's fine. Like at the end, it's for Allah. I do pray for her and I do make do what I please, open her heart. And but it's hard. She had a hard life. Me too. So, but yeah, she will. She will know now. <laughs> I was shocked because what you know from the Middle East when you live in South America is like, no, they're very judgmental and very strict. It's not like this. And then the people are very welcoming. And I came to realize that our culture are very similar. Latin country and Arabic um, countries are very similar. We're all family oriented. So it's like, we are similar. It's just that not knowing the ignorance of like knowing each other and then I did have a f uh, interesting change because um, I did one Ramadan when I still was not Muslim and I decided to wear a hijab I said let me try and it was totally different from before so it felt like a protection and it is a protection when you find when you look more into it you're like okay this is why it's like a physical protection and they know that they need to respect you and like lower your gaze and 
the treatment was very different. Even though before they were very respectful, but that was like the ultimate respect. And then it felt, it felt good. I was like, it feels good to wear hijab and more cover. So from that time, I didn't wear hijab, but I was always like with an abaya, and I and I love the abayas, how they look like. Um, I love the culture, and uh, they have taught me every every time you meet someone, they always say has something to say. They always like uh, interesting about where you come from and how is your culture. And I found out that Spanish and Arabic have many uh, similar words like pantalon, camisa, arroz, like rice. And it's like funny. And actually, my mom's name is Jamila. We didn't know it was Arabic. And then I was like, wow. And then Lillian is also Arabic. So it was like, it was meant to be. <laughs> Subhanallah, right? As I learned through this journey, we are all born Muslim. But once I became to understand it better, it's like, that's how you should live. If we were all understanding of the religion and how close it is, it's like, that's the perfect word, world to, to live in. Respect, equality. So it's like, you are a very Muslim, you just don't know about it. So why don't you just Come to the mosque, ask about it, read, because I'm sure they will feel identified as much as I did. Because it's just, it's that you don't know it until you try to find more information about it. I, I think they're just scared. Just don't be scared, ask around, you will find your path and Allah will guide you. It's all about your intention. I see the world in a different way because at the end, whatever is bad or wrong, it will have, you, you think that there is no justice, but at the end it will be. Maybe not in this life, maybe the afterlife, but it won't be just injustice. It will have a solution. And um, it's just a way of life. And my life, I've, Lost, not lost, but like I've um, had many friends before and now I just have a few and it's better this way because at the end those friends were not as good as I thought. So Alhamdulillah, he removed them from my path. And since I took my shahada, I felt that he just, <laughs> my path has been like straight. Like he removed all the bad. Once your intention is like, I'm gonna leave this because of Allah, he will give you something better to replace it. And once I continue like going the straight path of Islam, I feel like a big weight has lifted from my shoulders. I just feel like it's just perfect. Don't be scared, don't be worried, because he is there watching you. It's like you worry too much about something and then you're like, if you just trust Allah, he will just make it easy for you. You just pray, if it's good for me, Make it, made it be. If it's not, just remove it. And that also made me, because I'm an overthinker, I'm always thinking like, what is the, once I stopped and I said, okay, I leave everything in, hand, in Allah's hand, it happens. Or it doesn't, and then you know why it didn't happen, because it was not good for you. So yeah, I'm, I'm happier, I'm in peace, which I never felt before. And just like all this noise in my head has been released. And I really hope that my mom will happen the same for her.